Lucrecia Martel is the most intriguing person on the planet to me. Lucrecia Martel is the most fantastic eccentric filmmaker that I have ever encountered. Lucrecia Martel is an icon, a hero, a genius, a madwoman, a pioneer in new Argentine cinema, and a heavy puro smoker. Just look at her Criterion Closet video, a series made by the Criterion Collection where filmmakers are invited to take as many movies as they please from their offices for free. She's someone, first of all, to take a full bag of discs. Someone to not only point out the films she likes, but also the films she doesn't. Solo, no. Someone to read an entire generation of filmmakers to the ground only to compliment two movies. Este cine es el cine que se dejó de hacer. And also someone who has an infectious and overflowing love for movies. Love stream. Esto que cualquier ser humano tiene que tener en su biblioteca. Yeah, I might or might not know this video by memory. <laughs> As you can see, I love this woman. I think about her probably every day. But who is she? What makes her so fascinating? Why is it so important for me to communicate my love for her beyond giving me high doses of serotonin? And above all, why doesn't everyone know her? Well, I'm sure glad you asked, person who randomly stumbled upon this YouTube video or friend or family member. Welcome to Overlooked Hotel, where we explore the unexplored corners of film history. My name is Sebastian and I will be your handsome host for today, where we'll be looking at Argentinian LGBTQ icon Lucrecia Martel, aka the most wrinkly brain working in the film industry for the last decades. The first time I stumbled upon Lucrecia Martel, it was with this picture on the cover of a magazine. Her enclosing stare, Mona Lisa's smile, electric straight hair and poised but slightly awkward demeanor caught my attention. I can't find the magazine or remember what it said, but I remember very clearly getting swallowed by her image and wondering who the hell was this woman. It took a couple of years for me to watch one of her movies, La Cienega, about an upper middle class Argentinian family decaying emotionally and morally during a suffocating humid summer. It's the first of only four features. Yes, she's only directed for movies, technically. Not because she's been active for a small amount of time, La Cienega came out in 2001, but because she doesn't understand how other filmmakers have so many things to say as to make a movie every year or two. No, no, she doesn't waste time repeating herself, nor does she necessarily breathe cinema. She said herself she's not a cinephile and doesn't really know a lot about movies. Rather, she uses cinema as a form of expression whenever she needs it, whenever she thinks she has something worthy to communicate. And she spends a lot of time working on whatever she's communicating. Her upcoming film about the murder of indigenous activist Javier Chocobar is a film she's been working on for nine years, and if released in 2021, as IMDb says it will be, it would mark a four-year difference between it and her last film, Sama, which came out in 2017. A much shorter time than the nine years between Sama and the Headless Woman, her third film that came out in 2008. I like to think of Lucrecia Martel as a film director equivalent of the weird kid who sits in the corner of the classroom snorting glue and wearing a beanie. Her own mother in an interview described her as a little rat or monkey when she was a child. Watch an interview or lesson with her and half of it will be genius, half of it will be nonsense. Her films too are in a way like this. La Cienaga, as Lucrecia puts it, has a structure that imitates that of a film conversation with her mother. As scholar David Oviña puts it, all films tell a story. La Cienaga does that too. But it doesn't in the way that North American films do, where there are clearly defined principal and secondary lines. If there's a plot, it's because there is a sort of web. The movie moves like a hyacinth through a river like a sort of shapeless dough going from side to side. Its characters are at the mercy of supernatural and natural forces. They choose to disengage in the type of anesthesia they live in, and they wait for something external to come to condemn or save them. Jesus, that's a lot, I know, but he puts it so beautifully. To me, Martel's films are like surrealistic worlds, where nothing makes sense and everything feels like a stream of thought, where there's always something wrong, some danger lurking in the story's underbelly, but never revealing itself completely. Everything is uneasy, but at the same time, everything is completely normal and real. There's nothing fantastical in what her stories are about, but her way of telling them is intoxicating. In her words, 
If an alien arrives on Earth and sees some people eating an abundant and well-served meal, and in the corner it sees others looking for what to eat between the garbage, it wouldn't understand what's happening, because the alien wasn't pre-shaped like all of us to naturally accept the unacceptable. What I try to do with my films is to make that reality seem like a fissure. Let the audience be perturbed and say, well look at that, there's conflict in there. To let them see for an instant with the eyes of an alien. Her subject matters are subversive to the norm themselves, with constant critical looks towards classism and racism in Latin America, featuring lesbian and lesbian coded characters, as well as repressed sexuality, moral anarchy and delirium. But on top of them, her way of storytelling is completely deviant of convention, an aesthetic counterculture in itself. She's managed to build such a distinctive cinematic language and way of looking at things. Though of course, it doesn't come without a price. It's easy to become frustrated and confused or even bored with her work. Many critics and audiences have. And it's created a lot of frustration for herself in the past, but not without resistance. She says, it's funny how we demand film and literature to be comprehensible, when a major part of the things that happen to us are exactly incomprehensible. Existence is incomprehensible. They label you by telling you that you will do a tour cinema, too intelligent, only for the enlightened intellectuals. It's a thought that responds to a hegemonic intellectual system that has formatted the last century. Any alternative is a weird thingy. It's not. It's only a different way of telling things. And I think we need all sorts of them. When she was editing Sama, Martel found out she had cancer, and she had to halt the movie's development. She got better and survived, but the experience allowed her also to free herself from the judgment of others and to let herself take more risks, as she says. Which is surprising, because it doesn't feel like she's pulling any punches in her first three films. But if Sama is a result of this, I absolutely love it. It's about a Spanish officer in Asuncion during the 17th century who desperately waits for permission to leave and rejoin his family. His wait becomes tedious, tiring, and disjointed from reality. A film fittingly about death, conceived years before Lucrecia's cancer, it is an achievement in what film can conceivably be. It's a film that swallows me just like that first ephemeral glimpse I had of its director years ago. And ultimately, that's sort of what Lucrecia Martel is to me. Someone who constantly swallows my mind. Yes, I think that's fitting. Before I end this, I just want to show you this beautiful mural made four years ago for Montevideo's International Film Festival, which includes Federico Fellini, Alfred Hitchcock, Luis Buñuel, and Lucrecia Martel depicted as saints. Look at it. Take it in. Tell me she doesn't fucking belong there, because she fucking does. Well, um, that was my first YouTube video. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> like and subscribe as YouTubers say, because I guess now I'm one of them. <laughs> I kind of want to make more videos like this for the future, more queer filmmakers, more women directors, more Latinx filmmakers. Um, Lucrecia Martel kind of fit the bill for all of them, and she's also one of my favorite directors, so I was like, might as well start with her. But there are many ideas brewing, and if you have any ideas of what you would like to see, learn about, also comment below. See, YouTuber. Also some other ideas, I'm thinking of possibly doing a horror series soon, maybe? And yes, until next time, thank you for watching, bye. gonna be an exciting YouTube channel.